live stream. Today, we're going to be announcing our winners for the November Art Dare, and we're also going to be announcing the January Art Dare. And if you would like to learn how to turn your artistic weakness into your strength, check out artprof.org where we have lots of free resources, tutorials, critiques, pro development, and all that cool stuff. So, Claire, why don't we get started with our discussion for the day? Yeah, the November Art Dare was to find inspiration with Ken, who was your artist muse for the month of November. Ken is a longtime RISD model, one of my favorite people in the universe. And it was just fantastic to see all of you interpreting Ken's poses in a number of different ways. So the first artist we're gonna look at is Irina Kladova. And Irina explains that she was very attracted to his powerful energy trying to determine or invent the reason for his screaming facial expression. And Arena says, for the shading process, I imagine the skin is similar to a throat or veil, lies over the muscle directly over the bare bone, somewhere it falls into the voids. So here is the work in progress of the watercolor piece. Here is the final. And then Arena didn't stop there. There are all these other stages that she worked on for the other piece. And wow, these are just stunning. What do you think, Jordan? No, I think it's fantastic. I really like how you're able to capture the uh, the forms and just the very subtle differences in value, especially on the side of the face. Because um, it one, it's the, you know, where the light's coming from, but also just the pigment of the skin. I think that's really impressive how you're able to capture that. Yeah, the elasticity of the skin is so prominent. Like this one little vein that's just popping out of his neck, I think is so dramatic and extraordinary. And how cool that Ken is part of this rocky landscape. I mean, that was sort of the fun thing about this dare is that everybody had access to the same photos, but everybody interpreted and transformed Ken into something completely different. So that was a lot of fun for us to see because Ken really looks monumental here, doesn't he? Oh yeah, he's the fifth face on Mount Rushmore. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And gorgeous colors, the layering, all of the variety, and even that atmospheric background I think is beautifully done. Next artist we're gonna look at is Paula V. Fernandez. And actually, this is from the short of Ken, where we interviewed him sitting at the RISD beach. And you can watch that short on our channel. And Paula says she was most drawn to the series of Ken wrapping his arms around his chest and his head. And she said he looked like a man caving under pressure, trying to bury his head into his body. And actually ended up doing a stop motion animation based on Deep D's demonstration. And here we have a couple sketches. What, what's your take on these? Oh, these are fun. These feel very, uh, they remind me of King of the Hill a little bit, or it's just, uh, it's very simple, but also very uh, lively at the same time. Love the exaggerated features in this. And so let's take a look at Paula's stop motion animation. So that's the work in progress version. And then Paula colored it in. Oh, what do you think? Cool. That's so cool. It's like, I, I always liked metamorphosis animation. I always thought that was so cool because you never know what it's going to turn to or what or how you can even predict what's going to happen. Most animation, you can't do that. It's just like a story. You, you can tell something that's going to make sense. But this is uh, doing something very different. I, I enjoy that aspect of it a lot. The stop motion animation, it looks so seamless. But then Paula also included all of these work in progress images of the various pieces. And you don't see a lot of people doing traditional animation in this way. Pretty much 
most of it is being done on apps or software. And I just love seeing how scrappy and accessible that is. Because Jordan, sometimes people think they have to buy super expensive hardware and equipment, but it's it's so refreshing to see this. Yeah, I remember one time I even did a, like a, I, I sent in an application for animation program in high school and I just used a flip book. It was just uh, note cards. That was it. And so you're like, it's taking me back to my roots. I really enjoy that. Lisa says, I can already tell it must have been tough choosing winners. And Ginger was following some of them on Instagram as well. Well, I'm wondering, Jordan, why do you think people were so excited about drawing Ken? Um, probably for the same reason you were excited to announce it, which that Ken's a really, really great model. And he has a lot of variety in his poses. And we're only using... You're only getting like the belly button up and i can only imagine what happens if you have a full body like there's just something really expressive about about him as a model so i could see where people would get a lot of inspiration from that i really think ken is a gifted model i know technically there aren't any certificates or degrees <laughs> you need to be an artist model but he's such a lovely person but he works hard i mean i could tell when i had him in my classroom that he really cared about the artists and the experience that we had drawing him and it shows in all of his photos okay we've got some drawings from amanda norris who is here live with us in the chat and amanda talks about exploration of mediums and so amanda explains step back looked at the presentation i would typically call these unfinished or underdeveloped chose to keep them that way. That's exactly how I feel as an artist at the moment. They have greater strengths, even greater weaknesses. Leaving them this raw is a reminder that I'm still cooking as an artist and that's totally fine. I love that, Amanda, because there is so much pressure on people to produce. But I love seeing the range here because Jordan, we have the soft pastel piece and look at how different it is from this piece. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, we were on a Discord call not that long ago, and Amanda was talking about exploring different styles. And I think this is a key example of why it's so great that you're that you're doing that because you have two pieces here that are of the same uh, muse, if you will, but they feel very, very different. Um, or three pieces here. I don't even, how many are there in here? Because <laughs> they're all different. So <laughs> they're far. All yeah. yeah, it's it's actually incredible, and um, not a lot of people can do that or even have a desire to do that. So I think that that's actually a strength of yours, uh, despite uh, maybe wanting to have a specific style or a specific way of going about doing art. Amanda, I just love this painting. It is so fleshy and the form is just bulging out of this painting. And it's so different than this one, which feels very quick, almost like he's moving by me extremely quickly. But then I also think this one is just so dramatic and bold. I mean, this is how you transform a reference photo. Mm -hmm. It's actually reminds me, I just watched the film uh, Intergalactic on Netflix last night, and it's got a very Spider-Verse-y, like, pop color feeling, and it just kind of reminds me of that. It's very fun, very vibrant, lots of different textures, excellent stuff. Yeah. And then this one is really quite subtle in a way, but oh my gosh, the range of marks. This in the background, which is more graphic. This has strokes going up and down. This is sort of a splotchy texture to it. And so I think, Amanda, what an extraordinary range of styles that you explored with the same subject. Yeah, Sonnet says you guys got really creative with these images. Manette says, these are great. Love the brushstrokes, how expressive they all are. Next artist is Sonia Cullo. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say your last name, but we've got four <laughs> of Ken <laughs> in a single image. And Sonia says that she's fascinated by the human figure. Ken is the perfect muse. I felt immediately inspired to let multiple Kens interact. And so the isolated head stands for the capability to learn, understand the world. This can give us comfort, Ken who holds the head, can let other people feel admiring, 
Ken on the left. <laughs> For folk, jealousy, Ken on the right. What do you think? I, I love the fact that you put such a deep story to this. Like you really thought about the expression, the pose, each character's emotions and, and, and motivations. Um, and then just the severed head <laughs> idea. <laughs> like all of it's just really fun and wacky. And I also really like the complimentary scheme or, or the adjacent to, uh, complimentary scheme with the green and the orangish red. That looks really, really nice. My favorite part of this piece is the glow because the head in the middle is glowing. <laughs> like lighting that's impacting them and so this is really fun Sonia because you really did invent a lighting situation because obviously they didn't have a glowing head <laughs> when I was shooting that reference photo and I just love the facial expressions because the one in the middle seems very content and the one on the right he he's a troublemaker I'm a little bit worried about him and then the really extreme contrast on um the little head i love those wrinkles yeah wrinkles are always fun to draw i actually when, when i talk to my students i'm like draw an old person with lots of wrinkles trust me you'll love it it's, it's great <laughs> seven angelic says such a creative composition giving me miyazaki vibes and oh sonya is here live with us in the chat the lighting was a real challenge well, we think, Sonia, you did an excellent job with the lighting and created such an inventive scene here. Okay, let's take a look at Brian Flaherty. Sorry if I said your name wrong. And Brian says that he is a longtime portrait artist, tried something different, drawing the torso, and explains my art focuses on portraits of favorite people from American history and music. And a very old man with enormous wings was inspired by the picture of Ken in prayer. I approached every piece like that. What does it tell me? Well, I love the exaggeration here because that's the fun thing about a reference photo. You don't have to stay attached to it. Yeah, I, th I think actually it's a mistake to stay too attached to a reference when you're using, especially when someone is as dynamic as Ken. And so being able to take that as inspiration and moving away from it, uh, it through ever, whatever means you feel is best for your piece is I think the mark of a real artist, you know, just taking it and doing something fun and unique with it. I approve Brian of the Red Sox <laughs> reference in your piece because I grew up in Boston and oh dear, the Red Sox really gave us a hard time until they started winning <laughs> the World <laughs> Series. but. How cool that Brian saw a baseball pose within this reference photo. No, I think that's cool. I love I love stuff like that. You can get inspiration from just about any pose, any anywhere. And he had such a different story. I don't think I would have thought of baseball immediately if I saw this, you know? I mean, the original photo reference. And I just love the range of marks, Brian, because you've got marks that are very jagged. You have marks that feel like they're moving very quickly. They're extremely expressionistic drawings. And I just love looking at them together as a group. Okay, the next artist we're gonna look at is Amy Harrington. And Amy says that her motivation was working on fundamental drawing skills. Amy doesn't often do portraits or figures. And she said, I feel errors in proportion is so much more obvious. If you err too far working in a figure, people know it's just not right. Even if they can't tell you right off what it may be. And so Amy did the art dare leap, which is when people decide they wanna make the art dare bigger, more ambitious. Amy says, because I so often get bored of the subject, want to move on after a work, Ken must truly be a muse. I can see the value in doing a series. Well, we have several here from Amy. What do you think? You know, the, these are, like I love that they're almost like classic figure drawing studies to me. Um, I've always loved doing stuff like this and uh, it feels very personal to me. And I, I think that you were able to capture a lot of emotion, like just looking at the hands or the subtle veins and the, uh, the temporal ridge on the side of the forehead here, uh, like a, 
even the acromia, uh, uh, not the acromia, so the infra, infra clavicular fossa and all, all those little <laughs> elements there. Um, I, I really love that. The attention to details is, super, is superior here, is supreme. That's great. Amy, your cross hatching technique is just exquisite. I can see there's so much care involved in the way that you're rendering things. And it's really lovely how some of the cross hatching lines pop more and others more sink into the tone. And I am just in love with this neck. That tension, the compression, but then also parts like the bottom part of the neck, which are not as flashy, they still really convey that feeling of form. And so I think you should keep working in a series, Amy, because clearly you're doing really well the way that each piece is building upon the next. I mean, look at those hands. Yeah, I think that's my favorite part of this whole piece, actually. And I, I agree. I think it's definitely worth to continue doing this if it's something you're excited about because you just with the few that you've done, you've gotten a lot out of it, I think. And the work speaks for itself. I would love to see what would happen if you did five or ten more. It's very common. Sometimes people stumble upon something that really has potential to go further. And so, Amy, I don't know if you were considering continuing this, but I agree with Jordan. I mean, how fun would it be to see 15 of these crosshatch drawings of Ken to really keep digging deep? Because while I'm a big fan of jumping around, it's also really cool to come up with something that is focused. Okay, the next artist we have is Helen Cook. Helen is here live with us in the chat. And Helen explains, after doing the studies of Ken, I folded the paper into a meandering book. The way the book is folded allows the two sides to interact. Each page contains only a fragment of the figures. Unfolding the book allows the whole story to emerge. All right, so these are the watercolor studies. This is actually Lori, who's another RISD model. And this is the book. Now, I want everybody to look at this progression, okay? So this is the book all flat. But then what happens is the segments fold up into this meandering book. And then by the time you're done, you end up with this whole thing that folds up into one square. What do you think? Oh, that's dope. I really like that. I, I've always liked when things are just slowly revealed over time. And uh, it, it's sort of like it's sort of like watching a show where people are solving the mystery of something and get a little piece here, a little piece there. And then at the end, you get this whole mural of, of the artwork. And I think it's I think it's done really, really well. And I like that you just see fragments because here we can see just an eye. And so it builds anticipation. And how fun is it to have an artwork that is so interactive? Because as much as there are ebooks and stuff like that, Jordan, I really think people love books. I, I actually, one of my favorite places to go is the bookstore. Like, even if I don't buy anything, I'll just stand there or sit there for like an hour or two just for no reason. So, and, and I think a book like this, which is inherently incredibly creative, uh, you know, I think you could explore and, and see so much through it if you're just spending time with it. Like it's, this isn't like most other books you would see. Yeah, Soitan Lee makes a good point that this particular technique for meandering books, there's so many different ways that you can get that book to fold up. And Helen, I have to tell you, your book making technique is absolutely exquisite. Making books is hard and getting the paper to fold neatly, you've got really fantastic technique. Yeah, Helen says, really fun to make. Well, we can tell because it's a really exciting piece. Okay, the next artist we're gonna look at is Anastasia. And Anastasia had a bunch of goals. Figure drawing, a lot of figure drawing. Anastasia actually did 24 total. And she wanted to do complementary colors, working with tone, and finding a way of working with soft pastels and charcoal. 
So Anastasia did several pieces. We saw earlier these two portraits, but we also have this figurative piece. We have this other portrait and this torso as well. You know, it, what's really fun for me is they all feel very different. Like some of them have thicker outlines. Some of them are more ethereal like this one here where like the, the interior lines are the, are the main focus, like the, the lines in the eye and the nose, but the outer sh shape of the head is kind of just all fuzzy. It's kind of loose. And I like the fact that we can kind of explore and figure out where we want to put the edge of the contours. And good for you, Anastasia, for playing around with colors, because I do think oftentimes with the human figure, people tend to feel a lot of pressure to make it realistic skin tones. But I love the head at the bottom. That rich, purpley, pink shading. And then, oh my gosh, you all had so much fun with the wrinkles on the back of Ken's neck. I feel like those are just gorgeous. And I love this portrait. Oh my gosh, what you said, Jordan, about it building the form from the inside and not relying on outlines to define everything. Beautifully done. And then also we have this torso and, oh my gosh, those back muscles. <laughs> Fantastic work, Anastasia. Thank you, Sonia, for the super sticker. We always appreciate your support. Keep those super stickers coming because we need all of that to keep Artprof up and running. Last artist we're going to look at is Sal DeVito, who I think is live here with us in the chat. And wow, what's going on here, Jordan? Oh, <laughs> uh, some lots of some violent stuff is happening. Someone's not having a good day, I could tell. Yeah, I just this is so brilliant. So Sal says, really want to try something new. Picked favorite Ken references, laid them out in a dynamic composition that I like to turn into a really intriguing piece. There's definitely a Julius Caesar, a two Brute <laughs> narrative that's happening here. And you would never think this is from photos of Ken. I mean, there's no face in here that looks like him, but check this out. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. That is cool. And how fun. Isn't this photo bashing, basically? Yes, this will be photo bashing. Yeah. And so then we go back and you look at this and it's incredible to see the way that Sal used the reference photos as raw material, but then added all the clothing and the blood. I, I, I love this so much. <laughs> no, this is excellent. The, the storytelling here is really fun. And I like that you made all the characters very different. Like none of them feel exactly the same. They have different hair. Some of them have more hair than others. Some of them are wearing different clothes. That poor guy in the middle has got like 30 stab wounds. Like there's just a <laughs> bunch of stuff happening here. That's so I, I really like how far you took it. Sal is here live with us in the chat. Love this. And I believe this is another version. Um, Sal, maybe you can tell us if this is in a different media or something. But Sal, this is so good. I feel like I want to see you make more pieces like this. Because what I love about the art dares is people do often do things that they haven't done before or are very unfamiliar. And sometimes they find a way of working that is really worth another visit. Oh, okay. Sal says this one is an oil painting. Okay. Ah, this is good. Seven and Joel, Ken is a one man play. <laughs> this is oh, that's fantastic. Awesome. Oh, wonderful. Okay prizes we have to give out. Honorable mention goes to Amanda Norris. Congratulations. And the prize winner is Helen Cook for this stunning meandering fold artist book. Thank you all for participating. I'm so proud every month of seeing what all of you make. We've had an art prof share today. Art Prof shares where you create work based on our content. And this is from the personal narratives track. Our tracks are a sequence of video lessons and prompts. You can do them at your own pace. And this is a hard track because it really pushes your thinking and you have to make stories from your own life. And Jordan, that can be a real challenge. 
Yeah, it, it's it's tough because to, sometimes stories might just be embarrassing to tell, or you might not know how to tell from a unique perspective or what details to include or exclude. Um, so that's that's definitely a challenge right there. And we're going to look at Manette, who is a self-taught artist and did so many different topics. And so she did pieces that are about um, related to her hair the past few years, cut and dyed it a lot. Also uh, work about hanging out with her sister when they were 10. And week three, capture the feel of my sibling, fear of my siblings. And I felt for this little old church at a cemetery. Week five, wanted to have fun. Hopefully by the time I'm 114 years old, hoverboards will be more widespread. Week six, challenging, worked on, focus on the back problems I've developed in the past year, possibly related to an ATV accident when I was a child. Track took me through a lot of emotions, but it was exciting to use so many styles. Well, Jordan, finishing a track on your own is really hard. This is a major accomplishment when somebody finishes a track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the way I look at it is it's like a, uh, it's like a miniature version of art school in a way. And that's one of the things that I think, uh, it, one of the things that school can provide, generally speaking, is just that structure and being there and you being forced to be in a situation where you have to do this work that someone gives you. But when you don't have that same uh, overhead and being motivated to do it yourself, that's where you really get to put in um, all of the energy. <laughs> and, and that can be tough for some people. So the fact that you actually went through it by yourself and accomplished this much says a lot about you. And I think you should be proud. Amanda and also Seven Angelic are waiting for the hoverboards, which we see beautifully illustrated here by Manette. And this is a hard track because not only are you executing full out compositions that require brainstorming in thumbnails, but it's an emotional roller coaster. And you can see from looking at Manette's pieces, this one's very humorous, but this piece is about a lot of the back issues that Manette said she's been dealing with over the past year. And this piece is very moving to me. Yeah, no, I, I really like this one. I love the composition. I love the color palette um, and the subject matter uh, where you have the hammer and you have these broken fragments all around it. Um, and the paper that's kind of wrinkled and torn and stuff. Uh, there's something to that that I think is really, really unique and special. This is a real composition. I, I'm so proud of you, Manette, looking at this work because Manette has done a whole bunch of art dares. She's been hanging out with us in the Discord. And to me, seeing that growth is phenomenal because we're so lucky, Jordan, that people do hang out with us for a long period of time. And some of you have been with us for years. And isn't it just the most inspiring thing to see people grow and develop here? I think that's I think that's the reason probably we both enjoy teaching <laughs> is, is for that reason to see other people grow from week one to whatever we I mean our prop is an infinite thing right there's no end point so the fact that we could see you guys develop over the years is fantastic and not only that you're all supporting each other as you grow and develop together together. Like I love how Heather says, congratulations. So cool to see the finished pieces together because yeah, I mean, we're the ones on the stream. We're the ones in the tutorials, but that community support is extremely important because then all of you get to hear from a number of different voices. Thank you so much. Note for the super sticker. Keep those coming, everybody. It all adds up over time. Let's talk about the January Art Dare. You are going to imagine what is your future self at 114 years old? So Jordan, what are you going to be doing? And remember, imagined future self, okay? Does not have to be realistic. Okay, so I'm going to be the Black Panther. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I'm going to be super buff. Not gonna have any hair loss and shower boxes is gonna be like the biggest thing uh, on the planet since Star Wars. That's my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna live in a world with no wires. <laughs> Everything is portable in some way. And hmm, 
probably I have an art prof empire where everybody is worshiping me and trying to kiss my butt and people come out of the woodwork and they beg me for help. And I'm like, screw you. You were a jerk to me 35 years ago. <laughs> Holding grudges. <laughs> I always imagine that's the best part of being famous. I don't know. I, I feel like, you know, forget about all the rewarding parts. I just want to get revenge. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> all of these different people. I'm glad I'm on your good side. <laughs> yes, you should be happy. <laughs> so here's the thing. This is not just about what you are doing, but the world that you imagine you would be living in. So Jordan, is there some part of the world that you're imagining when you're 114 years old? That's not realistic. Um, I'm having my own island where you need special access to get in and everything is just going to be related to drawing, Spider-Man, <sighs> uh, shadow boxers, and, uh, and smoothies and vegan burgers. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe Benedict has divorced his wife at that point. <laughs> Are we breaking and, uh, up families? Oh my gosh. It's kind of a cover batch, whatever it takes. <laughs> so exaggerate and invent. That's the fun part of this prompt. What do you hope will happen? I hope that at some point I can eat pastries all day and not gain any weight. What do you expect will happen? And if you want to take a darker look at this, what do you fear will happen? Because what I like about this prompt is that it really can be upsetting and dark and tragic, but it can be really fun. Like we're looking at Minette's here um, that has to do with the hoverboard. And you can definitely take that route, but actually cat did as well so what's happening here this is cat when she's 114 years old oh wow she's just like princess mononoke just hunting things <laughs> just riding about a cat <laughs> <laughs> so carolyn's hoping for self-driving cars important for the elderly disabled and party goers and yeah, Heather right. says Hugh and Benedict have a fist fight over Clara. Well, see, I'm thinking Hugh and Benedict, they have a rotating schedule. So it's like I get to see Hugh on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then Benedict comes on Wednesday and Saturday, you know, whatever. And then we'll make some space for Terry Crews as well. <laughs> I am I speechless. Just... You had this whole thing worked out. You're like a master planner over here. No. <laughs> So we're going to give you all information that will provide resources for you to really explore this. The page is not up yet. I'm sorry. It'll be up later today. <laughs> but we have lots of resources for you to look at. And this is interesting too, Jordan, that yes, we're saying 114 years old, okay, just to be specific. But this really is a dare about aging. So tell people about this movie. Well, I've never seen the movie. but. From what I know, it's about a man who ages backwards. That's literally all I got. <laughs> and Brad Pitt. Yeah, so Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt is born as an elderly man, and then he slowly gets younger and younger. I haven't really seen the movie either, but that's really what the theme of this dare is. It's this concept of aging, because we're all doing it right now <laughs> without even thinking about it. But I wanted to show some of you different examples of that. Like, I love this portrait by Motley of his mother. I just think it has such a beautiful portrayal of somebody who's older. Like, what do you think of these hands in the painting? I actually think storytelling in the hands is incredibly important. And um, outside of the face is probably the most important form of storytelling and, and part of the human figure. And uh, I really like the detail that was put in here, just the tapering of the fingers, the subtle veins, um, the fact we could see a couple of tendons in there, and the delicacy of how he's painting the wrist um, and the forearm. I think there's something really beautiful there. Yeah, and I just love the care that was invested in rendering the texture of the hair, the striations in the neck. This is a book called Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt. I'm wondering who here 
read this book. It was a very popular book when I was growing up. And the premise of the story is very dark. It's a family that never ages. And it talks about all the pitfalls of that. I mean, the darkest way to think about it is if you live forever, you have to watch everybody around you die, basically. And it's a very emotional book for that reason. And so I think movies and books that are about aging are really good inspiration. This is one of my favorite ancient Hellenistic Greek sculptures because you know what? There are not a lot of sculptures of elderly people. It's usually like buff Zeus and you know Poseidon right. showing off his muscles. And I think this is such a beautiful lovely sculpture. It's so simple. It's a woman at the market and it's an incredibly expressive uh, sculpture. And then isn't this a weird portrait? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit. But I love the lighting in this though. I love that. The composition is really nice. So there are tons of places you can get inspiration from. And remember, there is the Art Dare Leap. You can draw four versions of yourself and hang out in the Discord because I think it was somebody up here who was talking about, yeah, Lisa says this will be fun to follow on the Discord channel. Help each other brainstorm. Toss out those wacky ideas about where you might be. Looks like Carolyn knows I'm going to be in an assisted living facility with my husband and the rest of our D and D group still playing D and D. <laughs> That's fantastic. That is so good. So to officially enter, you want to tag us on Instagram. Use hashtag #ArtProfDare. But if you're not on social media, you can go to our website, and we do have a Google form where you can submit your work. What's happening tonight at 6 p.m. Pacific? Tonight, I will be doing my last live stream of 2022. We're gonna be working on a Shadow Boxers poster. Not this one, because this one's already done. But it's gonna be really fun, and uh, we're gonna close out the year strong. So please come join me on the Joe McFo Show tonight at 6 p.m. Pacific time. And remember, subscribe, because these are really fun. I've been hanging out now and then because I'm like, wow, live streams are so easy when I don't have to stream. <laughs> <laughs> type into the chat and hang out with other people. So these are really fun. I hope you will all join Jordan later tonight. Please join Jordan and I in the Discord for a stage session. That is where you get to talk to us on voice. And it's really fun. We talk about everything. You want to meet us in the post live streams stage channel immediately after the stream. There are many ways you can support Art Prof. Guess what? You can sponsor a video because we have a long wish list and you can also propose a video. And guess what? Somebody is sponsoring a live stream on Tuesday. So this is a special live stream. We don't typically stream on Tuesdays. And we are going to be making styrofoam cup sculptures with Mia. And guess what? You know who sponsored this video? Pickle the Pug. Thank you, Pickle the Pug, for sponsoring a video, helping us get our stuff out there. Because Jordan, I'd much rather make videos for all of you than for some big corporate company. Yeah, I, I think when you guys can sponsor videos for us, it's it, we get to make videos specifically for you guys. It's what you wanna see. And I think it just helps build that community even stronger. Um, because in a big corporate world, they kind of just, they don't really put as much care into, into their customers, let's say, or their clientele. Well, I have a big wish list. I mean, people keep asking me about when are you going to do a three-point linear perspective video? And I just don't have time because I'm trying to make sure we stay alive. But part of making sure we stay alive is if people can help us out, sponsor those videos, you get the content you want and we stay alive. <laughs> it's a really good deal when you think about it. You can purchase a portfolio critique. Art school admissions deadlines are right around the corner. You can purchase an artist call. So often everybody has a very specific situation they're in and you need to get advice that is specific to your needs. Thank you to our top Patreon supporters, but I'm crying a little bit this week, Jordan, because we lost a whole column. Do you remember? It, the column oh. used to go here. 
but now this is gone and this is gone. I'm like, what, what did I do wrong? Like all these people left. We have to, <laughs> like, we have to get all of us to just cry on a stream about this. Yes, based, I'm already crying. <laughs> I mean, this is like really depressing to me because, you know, I love Art Prof. I love what we do, but oh my gosh, this is really stressful, you guys. So remember, when you pledge on Patreon, you get perks, you get exclusive content, you get critiques from me in the Discord. The Patreon channels are super fun because we can't afford to have a whole column <laughs> disappear. So please pledge, please. I really wish I could stop begging, but we have to beg more now, which is a big bummer. And yeah, we only went down a dollar this week, but last week we went down $137, which for us is a big deal. That That's not a small amount of money. So help us, please, because I'm a little depressed right now. Anyway, Art Prof has a podcast. It's available on Spotify and also on iTunes. And subscribe to our channel for more tutorials, critiques, and business tips. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.